This week, BMW owners got access to the Tesla supercharger network. Two media events occurred, one hosted in, by Inside EV and the other by IANA. And the Tesla Semi Megawatt chargers are now installed at the Tesla Semi factory in Nevada. Let's get into it. I'm here at my local Cracker Barrel, which is off Interstate 85. Concord, North Carolina, which I call home, is uh, commonly known as home to NASCAR. Not only do we host the signature Charlotte Motor Speedway uh, venue, but lots of the NASCAR teams have their offices here in Concord or close by. And also the NASCAR offices themselves are here in Concord. The General Motors Formula One uh, Cadillac team is setting up shop in Concord, so we have a lot of motorsports here. And Tesla has been doing a, actually everyone has been doing a great job. I just yesterday stumbled on the start of construction at the Walmart Energy location at our local Supercenter right down the street. Ayana opened a rechargery and had it open for about a week, a little bit more, and then they shut it down in order to install the canopy. And I was just there this morning, they're in the process of finishing up the canopy. I talked to the foreman, he said it'd probably be done by Wednesday of next week. Uh, and then here, Tesla supercharger team is putting in this station. You can see the utility crew back over there getting ready to energize the transformer, it looks like. Just a ton of activity going on here in Concord, not to mention other CPOs have targeted this city as well. It's uh, Kaloum has got a station that's in the process of opening, so tons of activity going on here. Uh, so anyway, Tesla, seems to be grabbing the headlines, multiple stories coming from them this week. So I figured this would be an appropriate place in order to record the episode. And if you look, I'm sitting in a pull through stall. Uh, the Cracker Barrel locations that the Supercharger team is building into almost all have these nice pull through stalls. So pretty cool. Starting off, BP Pulse posted into social media gift ideas for EV drivers. So now that we're in the holiday season, let me just quickly go over what they're recommending and it's pretty good ideas. A car blanket, because in an EV you could uh, car camp. Um, a music or podcast subscription. Tire pressure monitoring systems is a nice gift for an EV owner. A travel mug, if they're a mugger. Lots of people like to uh, have uh, extravagant mugs, and uh, so that's definitely a thoughtful gift. And essential car care kit. For instance, water repellent wax, car shampoo, microfiber cloths, and leather cleaner if they have leather seats. So uh, BP Pulse showing up to help out with some gift ideas for EV owners. Pilot Flying J opened the Elton, Maryland location, and it's a Nevi site. So... One of the people who are part of the Nebby program in Maryland uh, posted into social media. Her name is Morgan Ellis. She's the director of electric vehicle climate change and air quality for the state of Maryland. Uh, let me just read through this really quick. Celebrating the opening of the Elton Nevy EV charging station located just off I-95. These conveniently located chargers support not only Marylanders, but also interstate travelers. The station joins the already open Grantsville and Jessup stations. Soon, 16 other stations will join the growing number of EV chargers on Maryland's roads funded by Nevi. So congratulations to the state of Maryland for opening another Nevi station. It looks like they got 16 other queued up shortly behind there. And for a small state like Maryland, that's pretty impressive that they have 16 Nevi stations that they were able to get in round one. So, and that Elkton, Maryland is eight stalls underneath the canopy at a 24-7, 365 convenience store. Very nicely located. Now, let's get into Tesla because there's so much to talk about here. Uh, one of the last holdouts for the Tesla Supercharger Access was BMW. And this week they gained access. And I think this makes 15 non-Tesla brands that now have access to the Tesla Supercharger network. David, on this state on this channel uh, did a video where he's demonstrating its use and also his thoughts as a BM owner. So I recommend everyone go checking out that video here on this channel. Additionally, BMW themselves posted into YouTube a tutorial for owners 
to reference for charging at Tesla stations. Their video is about five minutes in length and goes into very detail about the particulars of the BMW app, programming, the infotainment navigation, and several other things. So if you're a BMW owner, you have two resources, one from David here on this channel and the BMW YouTube channel itself has a tutorial on how to gain, how to use the Tesla Supercharger network. It's pretty straightforward, but a couple of things to be aware of on how to program the BMW app and whatnot. Now, sticking with Tesla, uh, a YouTuber named Zegler, who calls himself a Tesla semi-advocate, and frequently does updates on the factory getting built in Nevada, posted a drone video showing the megawatt chargers outside the factory are now seated on their pedestals. The actual chargers themselves, this is, these are just the dispensers, the chargers themselves are not there. You see the pad for the chargers that are that is currently empty, but the process of getting those chargers installed is starting to uh, be completed. And that whole factory, I mean, if you see some of his uh, videos, and I watch almost all of his videos, I find it very interesting. The factory itself has the uh, structure completed, the roof is all done, the air conditioning units are on top of the roof, and they're in the process of building the uh, assembly line on the inside of the factory in order to complete it. So uh, plenty to look forward to there. And now we've got the megawatt chargers seated on their pedestals. So go check out Zegler's YouTube channel if you want to see those drone shots as I do. Additionally, I'm also an avid watcher of Dylan Loomis's Electrified channel, and two pieces of charging information about Tesla I gleaned from watching his videos. The first of which is a SEC filing by Tesla with a company called Boxable, and they're referring to it as Micromenity. Now, let me explain what that is. Kind of like a container lounge. Uh, so a very small form factor lounge. Uh, there was a purchase order listed in an SEC filing for Tesla that got picked up and Dylan was able to um, report on it in one of his videos. Now, what I think is going on is all these other CPOs who are focusing on amenities and kind of passing over the Tesla supercharger network with uh, attracting customers because they're more focused on amenities than Tesla Supercharger Network traditionally has been, they're adapting. And it looks as though at some point in the future at select locations, I'm not exactly sure the extent, but we're getting indication that uh, Tesla Supercharger is at least exploring, if not in the process of completing, adding um, small lounges to Tesla Supercharger stations where it makes sense. So that's pretty cool. And as the industry continues to evolve, uh, it's always great to see that the customers are increasingly starting to be taken care of with uh, basic needs, more so than we have in the past. Next, also from Dylan's uh, channel, didn't hear about this, but there's something called the Charging Passport, which has now been mentioned. And let me just read this first paragraph real quick because this is kind of cool. It's a way of gamifying your charging with the Tesla Supercharger Network. And because the Tesla Supercharger Network is the most, is, is the largest and the most used in the United States, this has to be something that is going to gain a lot of traction. Tesla Charging Passport is a year-end review showing you how you use the Supercharger Network to travel the world in 2025. It includes a map of your Supercharger visits, and they did mention that they're not tracking you. It's just um, autonomized data about your supercharger uh, usage. So it's not like they're tracking your location. They were very particular about that. Tesla is very um, overt about their privacy policies and how they enforce them. They're very strict about that. Uh, special badges to celebrate visiting iconic sites or reaching charging milestones. Nine outstanding users who have used charging passport and are on the top of one of three categories will win free supercharging for as long as they own their Tesla vehicles. So this is, there's some real skin in the game here. So the, um, the categories are longest trip, favorite superchargers, miles added, gas savings, and iconic chargers. And they have these badges that you get added to your um, charging passport if you complete certain um, uh, requirements. 
and they go over what is required in order to get this. So very cool of Tesla to gamify, because I know that I'm very susceptible to gamifying things, and I like to uh, collect badges and things and stickers. I'm a big fan of stickers. If you really want to get on my good side, hand me a couple of stickers, and I'll be your friend for life. So very cool there. So Tesla has been um, taking the weight for the headlines this week, definitely doing a lot of good work with working on the customer experience with the boxable space and the app of the charging passport in order to gamify it. So kudos to Tesla, it was really cool. And also BMW is now completed, the circle is complete and all the major automakers are now available to access the Tesla supercharger network. Now about the Media Day events with Inside EV and IANA. IANA held their first ever Media Day event and I was extended an invitation, but my wife was having surgery that day and I could not attend, uh, which was unfortunate because I did have many questions, but we've got to do what we've got to do. However, the good news is many YouTubers were there and they did a great job covering the event for us. And here are some of the highlights I was able to capture from my notes from reporting from other YouTubers. I'm gonna go over these very quickly. Relay rechargeries, which are the smaller form factor ones, are only going to be 20 to 30% of the total as time goes on. So right now we see a lot of relay rechargeries, but they explain that's just because we're in the initial bootstrap phase and those are the easy ones, kind of low hanging fruit that they can knock off. But as time goes on, what we'll see is those relay rechargeries are only gonna be 20 to 30% with the beacons and the rechargeries themselves be making up the rest of the 70 to 80%. Um, similar to BP Pulse, they're targeting the top 50 metro areas having a meaningful presence in. So what that means is different depending on the size of the metropolitan area. Some will have six rechargeries, others will have a dozen depending on the size of the location. The 50 metros will also have connecting corridors, uh, which is very similar to the BP Pulse strategy. The first 15 have all the sites acquired to achieve that meaningful presence. So not only do they have these top 50 targeted, the top 15, they've already actually achieved uh, securing the properties to have that meaningful access in them. So they have complete, they've really had a busy first year here. And uh, so now it's just a matter of execution. There was also new partners listed on one of the slides of Chinooks, I think it's how it's pronounced, grocery store and Hy-V grocery. So we've seen a new station added, a rechargery added, a Hy-V's already on the IANA rechargery, on the IANA website. So we know that one is in swing also. And apparently this other one, Chinooks, which I think is near St. Louis. Um, so new partners have been added. 4,000 bays are under contract with 3,000 in permitting or beyond, One point. 2,000 bays in construction or beyond, 500 bays open. Definitely been busy people. Here, as I mentioned in my hometown, they completed the rechargery really fast. They opened it up, wasted no time in making sure that the EV drivers had access to the charging station, shut it down in order to put up the uh, canopy. And it's gonna be about a week of downtime for that canopy to be installed and really nice, impressive work by IANA. 120 stations are currently under construction and still hoping to make the 100 sites open by the end of 2025. It's going to be close, but I think they have a chance. The Abilene, Kansas restaurant is coming soon with an independent operator who will also service the station. A lot of people who've been commenting there saying there's no amenities. Well, that will change soon. The uh, Abilene, Kansas attached restaurant is going to be opening soon. More gas station conversions coming with pull through like the Gardner, North Carolina one. The founding OEMs are telling IANA to go faster. So there is some thought that with the adjustment in um, enthusiasm or uh, over enthusiasm for electric vehicles that they would start to be pulling back. But IANA is getting the opposite message from their founding OEMs. They're being told, go faster, do more as fast as you possibly can get these things in. That's what, that's what they are saying. They're being told by the founding members of IANA, the, the people who are actually operating the IANA organization. There's also mention of a beacon coming to Boston with a bigger facility due to colder weather than the one in Westminster near Los Angeles, um, where there's outdoor seating. Uh, so the one in Boston is said to be um, 
larger facility because of the colder weather. Now, I'm not sure if that was an anecdotal description or if there is actually a Boston beacon on the boards and identified already. I, I think it would be because they said they have all the property for the 15 largest metro areas already under contract uh, in order to achieve that meaningful presence. So I have to assume the beacon for Boston has already been selected and likely designed as well. There may be more than one beacon per market as well. So it's not like each metro area will get one beacon and that's it. Some metro areas will get more than one beacon rechargery. And they're looking at bringing the Alvitronic screens to the front in order to accommodate some accessibility situations. The Alpitronic HYC 400s have the uh, user interface screen on the side. So if you have accessibility uh, concerns, you have to walk around the side and that is a little bit cumbersome. So they're looking at somehow getting the screen facing towards the front. Secondly, Inside EV held their charging summit, which was a series of virtual presentations people were able to get as live video feeds. Many aspects about charging were discussed and I believe a replay of the event is available through Inside EV. One thing in particular I found interesting, I joined as I could, I didn't complete the entire thing, but I did listen to quite a bit of it as I was going through my day. Uh, Perrin's Bill Farrow was on one of the panel discussions talking about the uh, Thanksgiving travel data. And as we approach the end of the year, I'm gonna see if he would be willing to come back onto this show in order to discuss 2025 as a whole. By all accounts, 2025 is the year of the most DC fast chargers installed in the United States ever in a single year. And if my expectations are correct for 2026, it will exceed 2025. But let's see what Mr. Farrow thinks. Now for some new charging station openings. IANA opened eight, including uh, Festus, Missouri, Forest Park, Georgia, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Springfield, Illinois, Warrington, Missouri, Kearney, Missouri, Little Rock, Arkansas. And one thing about this, this is getting pulled from the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, and sometimes they flip them on in that database before they're actually serviceable. So be cautious before going there. If you need these stations for a charge, it's probably best to ensure that someone checks into PlugShare with a successful charge before you plan on using it yourself. Red E opened eight, including North Clemsfield, Massachusetts, Starton, Massachusetts, and this next one I can't pronounce, Ticeboro, Massachusetts, Monroe, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, Alma, Michigan, Rock, Rocky Mount, Virginia, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, showing a good collection for this week. And Tesla opened eight, including a very frosty Anchorage, Alaska location, which has been getting a lot of activity in social media just because of its location. As you could imagine, there's not a lot of charging in Anchorage, Alaska. And so Tesla putting in a station here is quite an accomplishment. Additionally, San Jose, California, Camarillo, California, Mount Dora, Florida, Jessup, Maryland, Perry Sound, Ontario, a place in Quebec at a Petro Canada, and a Wawa at Newport News, Virginia. Thanks for watching.